Using VLOOKUP across multiple workbooks is very easy to accomplish with Python's library OpenPy Excel. You just specify the workbook name and the sheet name of the other document when you are creating the formula. Here I have two documents that contain the same data. The first called document one, the second called document two. You'll notice as well that the tabs are called doc one, sheet one, and doc two, sheet one, respectively. Document one has a column of numbers in ascending order, and document two has the same numbers descending. Document one has the corresponding letter of the alphabet in column B, while those letters are missing from document two. Document two has the VLOOKUP formula in row one and is correctly returning the letter G from document one. For this video, I won't be going into the details of exactly how to write the VLOOKUP formula, as I have covered that in another video. If you are interested in seeing how to implement it, please click on the link at the top of the video or use the link in the description. But looking at this formula right now, you'll notice something that you don't usually see in a standard VLOOKUP. The table array contains a string of text followed by an exclamation point. It states document1.xlsx surrounded by square brackets and document1 one, sheet1. One. This string represents where the table array exists from the perspective of document2. The square brackets contains the name of the other document, and those square brackets are followed by the sheet name. This syntax that you see right here is Excel's way of knowing that this specific table array is located in an entirely different workbook. So now let's remove this column and get rid of the VLOOKUP formula I just displayed so that we are working with a fresh workbook in Python where I will be showing you how to place the VLOOKUP formula into the entire column with a loop. Here I am bringing in the workbook as WB and selecting the worksheet as WS. You'll notice that I am only selecting document two for this demonstration. I don't need to bring into memory document one because I will not be writing any code that actually affects it. I will then save the workbook in the cell below. Here is the cell that applies the VLOOKUP formula to the entire column B of document two. I am using a for loop to iterate through a range of numbers. I start with the number one and use the max row attribute of the worksheet to designate when the for loop should stop. I add one to that last number because the range function doesn't actually include the second number within the loop. So if I'm trying to loop from one to seven, which is a representation of the range of cells that I do have, I must state that we need to loop in a range one through eight. For more information about how to use the max row attribute to add data to a worksheet, go ahead and click on that link above or see the link below in the comments for a video where I reviewed that specifically. By using this max row attribute, I am ensuring that the loop exits once there are no more rows of data. Each iterating variable in this case is called row. I am selecting each row as they're iterating up one by one, making sure my VLOOKUP formula is also increasing so that the lookup value in document two matches one of the values in the table array of document one. The actual table array portion of the formula remains the same as it was written in Excel itself. You just need to make sure that you're pointing to the correct location to ensure Excel is extracting the data correctly. I'll execute this cell now. I'll save the workbook and reopen it to check the work. And here you can see side by side, document two is now returning the correct letter for any given row based upon the values that are contained in document one. So it's actually quite easy to do. All you have to do is write out the VLOOKUP function and make sure the lookup value is searching on a table in another Excel document by passing it the document name in square brackets, followed by the sheet name and an exclamation point. Thank you for watching. Please do remember to give this video a thumbs up 
Let me know in the comments if this was a helpful video, and let me know what other features of OpenPyXL or Python you would like to see reviewed in future videos. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can know when the next video drops.